the fans of Railroad Tycoon have been quick to dismiss Sid Meier's Railroads as a game that is stupid and simple and all that jazz. And that's a fair point to make, Railroads is a pretty unintelligent game. But rather than judge it for what it is not, it should be judged for what it is. Railroads is not a rail mogul simulation, Railroads is a toy train simulation. And it's with an almost childish delight that I lay down my tracks and get my trains running around the map. It's something I never got to experience as a child, and as an adult I didn't even realise I liked trains until I played railroads. But it's clear to me now that I missed out on something very special. The simple act of setting up train routes is nearly indescribably enjoyable, and it's the game's very simplicity that makes it so much fun. There are actually two games in railroads. One is the toy train simulator I just mentioned, the other is a competitive toy train simulator, where the objective is to buy out the opponents by buying all their stock, which has a very different feel to it. The former works quite well, though it has a very finite lifespan, while the latter, which really is the main focus of the game, is fundamentally flawed, but enjoyable nonetheless. Both game modes use all the same gameplay elements and maps and play in exactly the same way, more or less. But without opponents, the pace and urgency and strategy all change quite a bit, and a lot of the gameplay elements, like the stock market and auctions, don't make much sense without opponents. In the non-competitive game mode, the game has a very relaxing, very calm feel to it, and although you have optional objectives you can choose to attempt, things like connecting a rail track between two cities or delivering 20 cars of passengers from Y to Z, it's very easy to just sort of sit in a stupor, near hypnotised by the trains as they chug around the map, the constant ching sound letting you know you've just earned a little bit more money. Money isn't really an issue in railroads. That is to say, you'll never be struggling to maintain your rail empire. You'll never be in a situation where what you've built is in jeopardy, as profit is a given. The only issue with money is how much money you're earning, as this determines how quickly your real empire will grow. But growth is a certainty. There's no real money management required, or allowed for that matter. The challenge, in fact, is absolutely absent. Like I said, this isn't a real mogul sim, it's a virtual toy train set. In fact, there is even a difficulty toggle to disable money entirely. People judging it as a Railroad Tycoon game are really missing the point. Railroads is doing something different, and more importantly, is doing it pretty well. It's the focus on maximising profits with simple actions rather than any kind of business acumen requirement that makes the game so clearly a competitive title. And you might not think it, in fact the idea has probably never even occurred to you, it hadn't to me, but a game based around competitive railroad empires actually works really well. There are about a dozen maps in the game, some designed specifically as single player maps set in Britain, mainland Europe and the USA, others designed specifically for competitive play. In each map is a bunch of natural resources, things like coal and fish and cows and trees, and cities that convert these resources into usable things and slash or require these usable things. Raw fish, for instance, needs to be sent to a cannery first to turn it into food, and only then can it be sent to a city that requires food. Coal, on the other hand, can be used to make manufactured goods at a refinery, or it can be used to fuel a power plant. Every city has its own unique set of demands that change over time as the city grows. Your ultimate means to your goal of buying out your opponent is going to be to string together the most lucrative supply chains you can. One of them, for example, being to transport coal to a city with a metalworks, where it can be used to make steel. Then that steel can be transported to an automobile factory, where it can be turned into cars, and finally those cars can be transported to a city that demands cars. Stringing together these elaborate, high-profit supply chains is very satisfying, but there are simpler things like transporting passengers and mail between two cities that will make you plenty of money too. You want to strike a balance between things like passengers and mail and the high-profit things like cars, gold and weapons, as relying on just one alone will probably not net you a victory. Although you do have to think and plan, the game doesn't allow for complex strategies or corporate calisthenics, but even so it's very hard to not break out into a diabolical Dr. Evil laugh when you set up a supply chain that you know just made you an insane amount of money, or better yet, stole it from someone else. Because, and this is probably the coolest thing about the game, no one actually owns any of the resources a city produces. If my opponent is making shitloads of cash off of a slaughterhouse, I can make my own rail route to the cattle and take all the cows I can carry. Same goes for every other type of resource, and if you are both tapping the same resources, things like number of trains, number of train cars, distance of journey, and speed of journey all become things to consider. So at this point, there is a lot more to consider than just laying down track. Also, as you need a certain amount of room to build a bridge over a track along the ground, and because you can't build bridges over bridges, you can totally cock block your opponents by selectively laying down track. The extra cherry on top that really spices this up is that you can buy industries. 
Each city has a maximum of three industries, and it's these things that determine what a city can produce. So, for instance, if a city demands fish to convert it into food, that means there's a cannery industry in that city. Every time any player delivers the relevant resource to a city with an industry that you own, you earn some money. By default, no one owns them, and the only way they can be bought is through the auction system. The auction system is very simple. You can outbid the current maximum by either 10,000 or 50,000, but that's your only move. Bid up by 10, by 50, or don't bid. The auctions start with a 30 second duration, though every new bid within the final 14 seconds resets the timer back to 14 seconds. This is actually a really fantastic idea, as it makes the auctions a battle of wills rather than a battle of last second bidding. Sometimes you'll be trying to figure out how much you expect an industry to make, figuring out exactly how much it's worth. Other times you'll just want to deprive your bastard opponent of the extra cash he'll make or force him to pay more. And other times still you won't have enough money and will have to bow out of the bidding. In instances like that, there's nothing to do but accept that your opponent beat you. Well, either that, or try to block off the resource by laying track tactically, making the few hundred grand he just dumped into the industry a waste of money. It's a really great feeling to buy an industry on a supply chain that an opponent owns. The only way he can deprive you of the profits of that industry is by cutting his own deliveries, and subsequently his own profits. You'll also get to bid on patents that come up for auction periodically. These range from things like a cash bonus on passenger deliveries, to increased train movement and tight turns, to a 50% reduction in train maintenance costs. Some of these things are particularly valuable, and the maintenance reduction in particular will probably save the winner millions, so these bids usually go up as high as people can afford. Ownership of a patent lasts 10 years, after which time it becomes public domain and everyone gets it. But if you're spending 600 grand a year on maintenance costs, cutting that in half for 10 years is well worth a million or two if you've got the cash hander. Patents aren't really a great idea, but they further flesh out the auction thing, and auctions really are a great gameplay element. In addition to bidding on industries, you can buy them outright. Each city has a maximum of three industries, and you can create new ones if the city has an industry slot free. This costs a flat rate of 500,000, but you become the owner. And if, for instance, it means you can now drop off coal at a city right next to your coal mine when the alternative is lugging it halfway across the map, it'll pay for itself soon enough. Some other wild cards that mix up things are random value changes of goods, as reported by newspapers. You can spend hundreds of thousands setting up a supply chain, only to see the value of your desired good plummet shortly after, possibly ruining your win in the process. While on the other hand, barely profitable chains you set up half an hour ago and forgot about can become gold mines as values skyrocket. You'll also find that as supply increases, value drops, so oversaturating a market can lead to your undoing. It's hardly intricate stuff, but there are things to consider, giving the game a depth that is slightly more than skin deep. But the problem, the big, huge, enormous, possibly game ruining problem, is that there are only a few maps, and fewer still are designed for competitive play. It's actually alarming how few there are given that the whole game is designed for competitive play. They've added a random map feature, but randomization is the antidote to balance. Play with randomization and you'll find one player starts in a much larger city, giving them an initial passenger bonus, basically winning them the game in the opening 30 seconds. Or you'll find one player has coal, oil, steel and automobiles on their side, and the other has wood, paper and grain on their side. Randomization is simply terrible for a game that requires balance to work at all. On the other hand, play with the hand designed maps and you've only got about 6 to choose from. Railroads is a mixed bag. Some fantastic ideas like industries and auctions, and a generally fun, damn near hypnotic gameplay model where childish delight and sheer train fueled joy make up for any lack of complexity. But it's pretty obvious that Sid Meier doesn't know dick about fast paced competitive gameplay, as he forces you to choose between a tiny stable of maps or broken, imbalanced random maps. For a game built from the ground up for competitive play, that's an unforgivable blunder. Thank you.